Hello, in this video we are going to walk through a Python script that showcases how to retrieve OpenAI embeddings. Also, we will do a test on which one is better, OpenAI embeddings or TF-IDF based vectors for a document clustering application. Let's get started. We will be using OpenAI library. Make sure to set your OpenAI API key. You can get the API key from platform.openai.com. I wrote here two functions. One is get first and tokens, and the other one is get chunks from text. These functions can be used to process the text content and make it suitable for OpenAI. The OpenAI model has certain token limits. In this function, get first tokens, n is the token limit that we'll be providing from the caller function. For each token, there are generally four characters in English. So this function, get first n tokens, will return four n characters from this given text. And I am doing a little bit of pre-processing of that text by removing continuous underscores or removing continuous spaces from the text. I ended up not using this function, but I am still keeping it here to make sure that others who will need it can use it. In this particular program, I mostly used this function, get chunks from text. This function creates chunks of text of size 4n characters in each chunk. So practically this chunk variable is a list where there will be chunks. Each chunk will have 4n characters. I made sure that no words are split between the chunks. The function will return the chunks as a list. This function retrieve embedding, no chunking. This receives a text and it calls the OpenAI API and retrieves embedding from OpenAI for this given text. I am using this particular model, text embedding ADA second generation model for retrieving text embedding from OpenAI. I also ended up not using this particular method, but I'm still keeping it here so that others can use it. I mostly used this method, retrieve embedding. What I did was I called the get chunks from text method with this text and whatever token limits are provided. And I stored the chunks in this variable. For each chunk, I retrieved the embeddings from OpenAI and then kept it in this list of embeddings. For all those chunks, I averaged the embeddings to get an overall average embedding for the entire text that came via this parameter text. That means even if you have a large document content that has more tokens than the token limit, this function is able to create embeddings by averaging the embeddings of all the chunks created for that text. I run the retrieve embedding function with some sample text and then I check what is the length of the embedding for this given text. The length of the embedding is 1536. That means whenever we send the text using the given model, this one, it will return us an embedding array of length 1536. For the actual experiment, we used 20 news groups dataset, but I used only two categories. These two categories are talk.politics.miscellaneous and rec.sports.baseball. In case you are not familiar with 20 news groups dataset, it is a standard classification or clustering dataset that has 20 categories of documents. For my test, I'm only using documents from the politics and the sports categories. Now the question is, why am I only using two categories instead of all 20. That is because I did not want to spend much money retrieving the embeddings using OpenAI's API calls. Each API call will cost some money, even if it is very small amount, it's some amount. For 1,731 documents of these two categories of 20 news groups dataset, I spent only a few cents. I think it's 10 to 15 cents. 
Note that I used the full documents. This is why it was 10 to 15 cents. If someone only uses the first chunk of each document, it will be much lesser. One suggestion is that when you use such a commercial API, please make sure that you set a usage limit like this one. If for any error in my code, even if my code keeps sending too many long documents to OpenAI, the loss will be no more than $10. I did set it here in the usage limit section that I don't want to pay more than $10 per month. Once the API calls reach the usage limit, the calls from my Python code will start to receive an exception. Also, whatever dataset you have, you just get the embeddings for once and save those embeddings in your computer. That is what we are going to do in our program today. There are functions in scikit-learn to fetch 20 news groups dataset. Again, we are only fetching two categories. We made sure that we have the text in a list and also we have the labels in another list. We removed any empty document or empty text from that list and we also removed the corresponding labels. Here I am printing some of the documents just to check if everything is working. In this part of the code, what I do is I create a list called data and in this list I keep ith document content, ith label, that means either sports or politics. Here in this context, politics is in index zero and sports will be in index one. So the labels will be zero and one, zero for politics and one for sports. Then whatever embeddings are retrieved from OpenAI for the ith document, we keep it in this embedding variable and eventually we take it to the data variable along with the ith document and the ith level. And after this loop executes, practically this list called data has all the document contents, their labels, and the embeddings. And we processed 1731 documents. For each document, we have the embeddings. And in this part, we are saving that variable called data in a JSON file. So after this part, we will be able to read our data, whether it is the text, whether it is the label, or whether it is the embedding list for each document, we'll be reading them from the JSON file. So we don't have to make those API calls anymore. Now I retrieve all the embeddings for all the documents from the JSON file. I apply k-means clustering on those embeddings with k equal to 2. Then I compute the adjusted rand index to find out what is the similarity between the labels we have and the predicted clusters. The rand index is quite high. It's around 0.78. Now the question is, what if we cluster the documents without using embeddings, rather using something like TF-IDF-based vector space? Let us see. I get all the text content for all the documents in this variable documents. Then I use scikit-learn's feature extraction facilities, the TF-IDF vectorizer. For all those documents, we create TF-IDF vectors. We have 18,807 features or unique words. We apply the same k-means algorithm, but this time with the TF-IDF vectors of all those documents, definitely for two clusters. We compute the adjusted rand index, and we find that the adjusted rand index is quite low, 0.03. With multiple runs of k-means, I have seen it improve a bit, around 0.05, but never close to 0.78 that we saw for the clustering using OpenAI's embeddings. In this experiment, OpenAI's embeddings win. It is still questionable that I did not remove the stop words, nor did I stamp the words before applying TFIDF vectorization. 
in an ideal experimental setting for TFIDF after a stop word removal and stemming and then applying TFIDF vectorization probably one can reduce dimensions a bit using principal component analysis Anyway, that will not make TFIDF-based vectors contextual like embedding-based vectors. In my experience, embedding-based vector representations are much more superior compared to the conventional vector space modeling. OpenAI's embeddings cost money, but the embeddings are really cool. Depending on your projects, you can choose which sorts of vector space modeling you will be using. You can also check Hugging Face for any free model to generate embeddings. That is a topic of another time. See you soon in another video.